Hello, my name is Walter McCarthy. I'm a vascular surgeon at Rush University in Chicago, and I'm also the co-director of our vascular laboratory. This is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about non-invasive testing for referring patients. We have put together a short explanation to help referring physicians understand and better select testing used in the non-invasive vascular laboratory to test for arterial and for venous disease. These tests are called non-invasive because there is no injection into the body or puncture of the skin, and there is no x-ray treatment or ionizing radiation used at all. Usually the tests are not the least bit painful and there is no risk of nephrotoxicity or allergy. This type of testing is conducted in what is called a vascular laboratory or a blood flow laboratory or sometimes a non-invasive vascular laboratory, and the studies themselves have been developed and perfected over the last 40 years. The technicians are well trained and the most experienced ones are accredited by an examination called the RVT exam. Each laboratory will have, besides the technicians, an identified clinical director who is a physician. Non-invasive testing works well for all the major arteries and veins in the body except that ultrasound is blocked by air so that the thoracic vessels are not well imaged and other means need to be used to look at the vessels in that area. The main components of tests are done with Doppler to show blood flow and with ultrasound for imaging or a combination of these two methods which is called duplex scanning. Duplex scanning is used for venous problems of the legs and undoubtedly 99% of all the venous thrombosis in the United States is now diagnosed with duplex scanning. Making it a little confusing, there are two general non-invasive tests used for veins. The first is to rule out venous thrombosis. Thrombose veins can be seen by the technicians and accurately diagnosed. The second study is for chronic leg swelling and the duplex scan can assess the competency of valves in the venous system to help understand why patients have leg swelling. You should order one or the other depending on what you want. Duplex scanning also works well for upper extremity venous evaluation. Arteries all over the body can also be assessed non-invasively. The carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries of patients who have had a stroke or a TIA or have an asymptomatic brui can be very accurately studied with duplex scanning. In addition, the celiac artery, renal arteries, the superior mesenteric artery, and the abdominal aorta can be evaluated. The arteries of the legs and the upper extremities can also be mapped out with the duplex. Often, with suspected leg ischemia, a quote Doppler unquote study is ordered. This test records the Doppler waveform at the femoral artery, popliteal artery, and down at the ankle, and can even be used over the toes or fingers. A blood pressure cuff is then used at various levels to see how much actual pressure is getting through to that location, and the pressure measurement can be compared to the brachial artery. This gives a fraction, which is known as the ankle brachial index, and should be roughly one, given that all the arteries are interconnected. These segmental pressures and waveforms can be used to indirectly assess the blockages in the lower extremity. The studies are also referred to as PVRs or pulse volume recordings. I hope that this has been helpful and remember that the vascular laboratory director and the technicians are always very willing to explain the various tests and to help pick out which one is most appropriate for various indications. Thank you. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.